Many people believe that verse number 13 says, the Lord will put no more on you than you can bear. That's not what it says. Uh, to the contrary, he will put more on you than you can bear so that you will know that he's able to help you bear. I want you to get that today. Now, I, I, I need you to run and tell that because there's some folks will tell you they'll fight you to the nail and tell you that the Bible said it all won't put no more on you than you can. No, that's not what the Bible says. What the Bible says is he will put more on you than you can bear. But whatever he puts on you, he'll make a way for you to have it. Does that make sense? Amen. See, we're never, we're never too old to really uh, understand new truths and, and, and understand, get new understanding of what God said and what he didn't say. And I, I, me personally, I'm a little tired of folks quoting God that don't know. Yeah, I, I, that right there, that gets all up my fingernails. Yeah. Now, if you've read him and if you've studied him and if you know what he says, then you ought to quote him. But now, if you don't know, don't do that. Because, see, you'll cause somebody else to stop and fall. Amen. Because they'll go by what you said yeah. instead of what he said. I want to talk to you this uh, afternoon, speaking from the subject, two things that blind saints. Two things that blind saints. Are you hearing me somebody? Uh, Paul is the writer here. He's writing to the church at Corinth. Amen. Uh, the church that had uh, a lot of problems. You may, uh, thank you, Ushers. Uh, but he's writing to them uh, to give them uh, some sage information. Hello, somebody. Uh, uh, and he starts off by saying to them, now these things uh, happen to them for examples. Who? Israel. The things that happened to Israel when God brought them out of Egypt, they happened to them uh, for an example. Uh, and they're written for our uh, admonition or for our learning or for our understanding. If you want a history of uh, what God has done in the past, all you have to do is read his word. And his word talks about what he did in the past. And when you know what he's done in the past, you will get an understanding of what he's doing now and what he will do in the future. Now, I'm saying that to say this, because you're going to hear, you probably have already heard that God is doing a new thing. There is no new thing. All right. <laughs> Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. So God is not doing a new thing. Don't get caught up in foolishness. Come on in here. Right. Now, and so as a result of that, as saints of God, uh, we, we all have 2020 uh, uh, physical vision most of the time. Hmm? Are you hearing me, somebody? Let me say it another way. If you are a child of God, you can have 2020 vision, whether you wear prescriptive lenses or not. I'm going to help you in a minute. Because some of us uh, allow ourselves to be blinded by things. You saved, but you allow things to blind you. Hmm? And so as a result of that, uh, God can, uh, uh, as, a, as a child of God, you can have 20-20 uh, uh, physical vision, but you can also be spiritually blind. Yeah. Help me somebody in here. Right. Uh, let me see if I can preach it like this. There are many people that are born with 20-20 physical vision, but they are spiritually blind. I put it like that. Our text today is to remind us uh, that life in the wilderness is typical of the Christian life that we live today. When the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt and when they traveled through the wilderness, it's typical of the church today. Uh, just like in the wilderness, God made a way. Can I work in here? Uh, a matter of fact, God was the one who led, amen, from Egypt uh, to the wilderness towards Canaan. Can I preach all right? 
Uh, and, and so as a result of that, uh, he, 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 he is typical of what the church is going through today. Now, I don't need to rehearse for you what happened uh, on the way to Canaan. All right. hmm? I, I don't have to rehearse for you that everybody that was 40, uh, 20 years older and up died. Do I have to rehearse that? Do I have to revisit that issue? Because that's what's going on in the church today as well. Yeah. Why? Because there was a lot of murmuring that went on. Listen, God feeding you uh, uh, angel food from heaven. The quail falling down out the sky. Water gushing from a rock. In the wilderness. Your clothes don't wear out. Uh, you have more than you need to sustain you. Yeah. Come on in here. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, uh, everybody got a, a GPS on your phone now. Uh -huh. Don't preach a little while, baby. Uh, but, but when they were traveling through the wilderness, uh, the Lord uh, had a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yeah, right. Oh, come on in here. Uh -huh. But now we, we so high tech now. You know, you just push a button and it tell you where you, you're here. Where do you want to go today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we can have all of that and still be spiritually blind. All right. All right. Amen, somebody. And so uh, many of the people of God uh, uh, were overthrown in the wilderness. Amen. Uh, and uh, many of us today are overthrown in the church. Come on in here. Why? Why were they overthrown in the wilderness? Because uh, they were they began to lust after idols rather than God. Don't you remember? Moses went away for a brief period. God called him to sign out. We don't know what has happened to this fellow Moses. Get up, Aaron. Make us a God. <laughs> Don't you remember that? Aaron got up. Uh, take off all your gold earrings. Yeah. Send all your braces down here and everything. And made them uh, a golden image, if you please. <laughs> Idols that could not hear them, could not save them, could not do anything. And when uh, Joshua and Moses came down over the mountain, there was a party going on. I'm going to leave y'all alone in here. Kind of like we do today. huh? Uh, if we don't want to hear the word, we turn a blind ear and a blind eye to the word because what we want to do what we want to do. Okay. Well, I'm just here to help you out a little bit. Amen? And so many of the people, they were overthrown in the wilderness. We're overthrown in the church today. I don't know why it has to take so long. Why do we need to go to Sunday school? Yeah. Why do we need to come to Bible study? That's just a guy, oh, I, they made me do that when I was a child. Okay. All right. We got every kind of excuse in the book. And what you do is you're getting overthrown in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. One of the worst excuses you can hear in the world is, uh, they made me go to Sunday school when I was a child. Now when I got grown, I decided, okay. You're lusting uh, after idols, amen? And so as a result of that, uh, that's what's going on in the church today, amen? And so we are lusting after idols and, 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 and not after the things of God. Matthew 6 and 33 and 2 Corinthians um, 6 and 17. Today, uh, we sit down. I'm going to work a little while. Today, we sit down uh, and drink, amen? We sit down and we eat. And then we rise up to play. <laughs> Same thing they did in, in, in the wilderness. Exact same thing. Amen. Uh, but there's some things that can blind you. Because if all you do, and if all life is to you is eating and drinking and playing, you don't have any time in your world for God. Come on in here. You don't have any time. And watch this right here. Just as the Israelites murmured against Moses and murmured against God, we murmur today. Listen, the Lord said, listen, take you six days, do whatever you want to do. 
but just give me one day. And what is the result of that? We don't have time. Really? Really? Okay. And so as a result of that, uh, we, 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 we eat and drink and we, 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 we get up and we uh, play, amen, and we commit sins of the past and we tempt Christ as the people of God did in times past and we are destroyed by Satan. Destroyed. Destroyed. First of all, the worst saint in the world is a weak one. You're vulnerable. You're most vulnerable. You're wild. Uh, and not only that, uh, like Israel, we also murmur against God. Amen. And, 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 and what did God do? God destroyed the destroyer. <laughs> oh, you trying you try to tear the nation of Israel down? You murmuring against Moses? You murmuring against you murmuring against me? Guess what? I'm about to let the earth open up and swallow some of y'all up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think down here y'all call that being smart mouth. <laughs> Amen. And so as a result of that, uh, Paul said, now these things were written as an example for us. But we don't get it yet. Uh, why, why don't we get it, Pastor? We don't get it because we don't read the Word of God. We don't read the Word of God to know what did happen, what has happened. The Bible is also a history book. Uh, Exodus 16 and 2, uh, Numbers uh, 14 and 37, and Exodus uh, 12 and, and 23. Now, uh, today some of us have a uh, Old Testament church mentality. We have what's called a numbers mentality. In the book of numbers, everything was about numbers. Can I work in here? We have some churches today, they're in the same boat. Nothing about Jesus Christ. How many folks you got, Doc? How many folks you got, Doc? Yeah. Yeah. How big is your congregation, Doc? All right. <laughs> How many numbers in your choir, Doc? Numbers. Yeah. What you are missing, what, what we are missing is we're missing the book of Acts. Because numbers won't get you anything but numbers. All right. This is why the Lord had to send the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. so that you could have some power. Oh, yeah. Come on in here, somebody. Oh, yeah. And I ain't asking nobody just saying what I'm saying. Numbers won't get you nothing. And not only that, you, you're standing on the wrong ground because you're standing over there in the law somewhere. When you ought to be over grace. Okay, I'm going to let you along with me. And so it is to help us understand that God has providential control. Do, do, do you not know that God has the power to supersede anything that you and I can think about? Do you know that God has the ability to change the course of history? Anytime he desires to do so, and he doesn't have to ask anybody. Can I work a little while? We're in, we're in the shape that we're in today in this country because of the providence of God. And all God is trying to do with the current administration and what is going on in the United States is he's calling for his church. Come back to me. You are way over there. Come back to me. Come back home so I can fix this mess. All right, and, and so as a result of that, God has control over the affairs of mankind. Uh, Genesis 50 and 20, and Proverbs 21 and 1, you put a circle around that. Now, we refuse to take uh, the yoke of the Lord and learn of him. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy labor. Huh? Yeah, we come, but we refuse to take the yoke. Well, the yoke is to help you understand how to walk and how to talk. Uh, and, and so we refuse that. Now, we're too busy uh, in 2018 uh, to attend Bible study. Let me help somebody this morning. If you are too busy doing nothing to learn about your God, you're in trouble. You, you're worse than a drug addict. You're in trouble. If you are too busy uh, uh, to attend Sunday school, you're in trouble. Yeah. Because uh, your connection 
is weak at best. Uh, you ought to be on a Cat 5 or Cat 6 cable, and you're probably still on a phone line, or worse. You, 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 you ought to have a fiber optic uh, uh, cable uh, to Jesus. Yeah. You, you ought to have a Wi-Fi to Jesus. Yeah. I'll leave you alone here. Right. Huh? Yeah. But you're still trying to dial him up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. All because uh, you have not kept up with the Lord. Can I preach in here a little while? And so as a result of that, um, we must spend time in his word. Amen. Many of us think the Sunday school is for kids. Uh, we don't have time to, uh, to, uh, uh, to spend in the word, in the work of God, in the word of God, and in the study of God. Oh, you don't hear me yet. Uh, I, I learned some of my most valuable lessons by that little card that they used to give you in Sunday school. Huh? That's before you had a book to take home. Yeah. They just gave you a little card with some pictures on it. Yeah. Huh? I, I, I learned a lot about that. Amen. Uh, uh, and uh, I learned the Lord's Prayer. I, I learned the different stories of the Bible. Are you hearing me, somebody? And, 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 and they stuck with me, and I never forgot them. And so if we don't learn and remember the past, we are bound to live uh, the past all over again. Do you not know that if you're not careful and if you don't look around right, uh, we're almost back past the fifties now. There are things that are, that are going on in the world. There are things that are happening in the world that are completely insane. Got folks calling the police on you because you live in a certain neighborhood all right, all right. and you look a certain. Do you understand what's going on here? All right, all right. Huh? I don't understand why there are some folks that don't understand that they don't want nothing. <laughs> but see, when you don't know the Lord, when you don't know what has happened, you're lost. You're just stuck in the middle. So it's important that you know uh, history, amen? And so the Word of God in our text is trying to tell us that, uh, uh, that the things happened to Israel to be an example uh, for them, but they were to remind, be a reminder to us, amen? And they were written... Uh, to be an admonition, or they were written for us to be instruction. Oh, come on here. Yeah. We, 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 ought know, we ought to have some instruction. And not only that, they were written to us for, uh, for, for us to have wise counsel. Now, if you want to get in some trouble, get a dumb lawyer. <laughs> be, be in trouble and go get a dumb lawyer. Okay. I'm trying to help you. Let me tell you something. If I, if I get in trouble, I want a lawyer that has never lost a case. Right. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's what I want. Amen? Uh, and, and so, uh, Romans 15 and 4, and Philippians 4 and 5. Now, for Israel, it was a reminder and an example of what will happen uh, when we do not obey the word of God. It was a reminder. There's a reason folks start dropping dead in the wilderness. There's a reason that buzzards uh, swarmed around and ate their flesh in the wilderness. Oh, come on in here. There's a reason that uh, they were beaten by snakes. There's a reason for all of that, amen? Uh, there's a reason that Moses uh, took a staff and put a serpent on it and they held it up and said, that everybody look up and, you look up and live. Yeah, yeah. Do you not know that there were some folks too low down and too high to look up? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to look on down here and die. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you that how God, uh, uh, thinks, what God thinks about obedience mm -hmm. is better than sacrifice yeah. and to hearken than the fat of rain. Uh, well, as a result of that, uh, God wanted uh, God's word or the word of God writes about what happened to Israel. It's to help us to understand. Now, if you're a Christian and you know you're a Christian, I'm not talking about I'm a Christian or I think I'm a Christian. If you're a Christian and you know you're a Christian, I want to tell you that you're a real somebody. You just don't know that you're a real somebody. And you won't know that you're a real somebody until you get in the word of God and see who you are. You're a real somebody. Uh, as a result of that, uh, uh, we must not act like uh, the world, but we must act like Christians. Huh? If you're a Christian, you ought to act like a Christian. Let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, why, why are you acting like a duck? If you're a Christian, why are you quacking like a duck? Better yet, let me see if I can get a little closer to you. If you're a Christian, why are you acting like a snake? Okay. All right. All right. I, I want to get your attention this morning. I, I know this is not normal 
church, and then you maybe you can't get with where I'm going, but you'll get there in a minute. Uh, and so as a result of that, uh, if you're a Christian, you're a real somebody. Amen? Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, we ought to walk and talk like a Christian. We ought to act like a Christian. Amen? We, we, we ought to do the things that saints do. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, uh, the re here's another thing. There are a lot of people who are confused about who you are. You look real, real Christian-like, real saint-like today. Yes, Lord. You got on the right clothes and everything. Huh? But there are a lot of people who are receiving mixed signals because you uh, look like a Christian on Sunday. But on Monday, you don't look like a Christian. You don't even talk like one. Come on in here. As a matter of fact, uh, you join right on in with the idols. And whatever we're doing. So if you are a Christian, you're a real somebody. And you must be that uh, somebody 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Amen? Whether you feel like it or not, because it's not a feeling, it's a fact. Are you hearing me, somebody? Uh, 1 Peter uh, 2, 5 through 9. And uh, we must be careful where we think we're standing. That's where I'm getting to now. I'm going to drill down into the message and I'm going to let you go. Uh, you have to be careful where you think you're standing. Or of what you think your position is in life. That's what gets us in trouble. <laughs> I believe one writer says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Amen? But Paul said it another way. Uh, Paul said, wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed unless he fall. You got to be careful. Uh, it, 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 saying that I'm a Christian, telling folks that I'm a Christian, and not acting like I'm one, uh, can cause me to fall. Yeah. And can cause other folks that think I'm one to fall as well. Can I work a little while? Uh, we, we've got to be careful uh, where we think we're standing or who we think we are in life. Many think that they're on holy ground, uh, but in fact, they are standing on sinking sand and don't know it. Huh? You don't believe that? Let the right thing happen in the church. Let something happen in the church that doesn't line up with what you think. All of a sudden, you will start missing in action. You've been, been missing in action for whatever reason. Never stop to think about, well, what does the word say? No, it's not about what the word says. It's about what I think. And so you got you to be very careful with that. Uh, we think that we're on holy ground, but many times you're on sick and sand and don't know. Romans 11 and 20 and Colossians 4 and 17, the two things that, that blind saints, are the two things that our God does not tolerate. Now, God tolerates a whole lot of things. Hmm? Yeah, he does. Tolerate our foolishness. Tolerates our ignorance. Amen? But there are two things that he uh, does not tolerate, and there are two things that uh, most people deny uh, that they practice, and those two things have them uh, held captive. Do you realize that there are many people that are, 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 are prisoners in their own world? <laughs> prisoners in their own body? Prisoners in their own life? Yeah. Hmm? All because uh, they're blinded. Yeah. Uh, 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 the two things, write them down, are pride and complacency. Those two things are the two things that blind saints because they start talking about who they think they are versus who God says they are. And the complacency is when we get to the point that we are so saved till we don't do nothing. We don't do anything. Uh, do nothing saying. Please show me that in the word of God. It does not say that at all. At all. The Lord said we are to go and work. Amen. Uh, the Bible said we are to go and make disciples of men. Amen. It does not say that we are to be complacent and do nothing. Yeah. Can I work in here? And so, um, because of these two things, uh, they cause spiritual blindness. Now, also, when we're in denial, see, many times we think that we're all right 
and we're all wrong. Well, if you want to know whether or not you're right or not, why don't you try the word of God? Put your put 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 you being right up against the word of God, and I think maybe your tone and your tenor will be a little different. Can I work in here? And so as a result of that, uh, 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 they cause uh, the saints of God to become confused. These two things, they cause, they cause you to, to become confused. And they cause you to miss out on reality. And they cause you to not understand what God has in store for you. Proverbs 8 and 31, Jeremiah 49 and 16. The Bible says to us that heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will stand forever. Uh, we must be sure that we are standing on the word. Are you hearing me, somebody? And uh, we must be sure that uh, we are standing on the promises of God. Amen? For those two things will never give away. Yeah. Those two things will ensure that you can have 2020 spiritual eyesight. Uh, when we uh, take time to live this Christian life, and not continue to live the life of the world uh, before we accepted Christ, God will always, I need somebody to hear what I'm saying to you. God will always make a way out of no way. Oh, you don't hear me yet. He never said that you wouldn't get in the furnace. He never said that you wouldn't get in the lion's den. <laughs> But what he did say is that when you get in there, I will make a way for you to escape. Are you hearing me, somebody? Uh, he never said that you were not going to have problems in this life. But what he did say is that if you are mine, I'll make a way out of no way for you. Well, I'm going to leave you alone here. Uh, we've got to take the time to uh, live the life. Amen? Being saved does not mean that you won't have trouble, amen. It does not mean that you will not go through difficulty, amen. Uh, it does not mean that you won't face temptation, uh, Hebrews 2 and 18. Uh, what it means is that when trouble comes, and it will, uh, uh, I, what it means is that when the difficult times come, and they will, it means that God is faithful and that he'll make a way of escape. I'm amazed at how many saved folks are in captivity. I'm amazed at how many saved folks can't get off of uh, the miracle round of life. Can I preach in here? Right. I, I'm so amazed at how so many people cannot uh, change their appetite and their behavior uh, for the world and their <laughs> taste for the world. What you say, what you're actually saying is that God does not have that kind of power. And I stop by to tell you that he got all power. Amen. He can do anything but fail. And so as a result of that, uh, uh, he's faithful and he'll make a way. Amen. The issue is what uh, God, God does not want his saints to allow idols. That's the issue. Anything that you or I put in front of God is an idol. Hmm? It can be a car. It can be a bank account. It can be another person. It can be an issue, a circumstance, a situation, whatever. Yeah. Huh? Uh, it can be a dead person. <laughs> Amen. Uh, all of those things can be idols, and all of those things will hold you captive. And you'll never become what God intended for you to become. Because why? Spiritually blind. Let me give you an example. Uh, there are many churches that uh, do many things. And uh, they have been doing the same old thing. 30 and 40 years, 50 and 60 years. If you were to walk up and ask, well, why are you doing this? What's the purpose of this? Well, I don't know. And then they got a history. All right. It will take you way down memory lane. I don't, I don't know, brother so and so, so 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 they started this and, and we decided we're gonna carry it on. Blah 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 blah. Listen, what is God getting out of this? And where are the individuals who started this? They're in the cemetery somewhere. Well, what is God, what is God getting out of this? 
Well, you know, we just have our anger thing. We have. Okay. I'm trying to tell you that those things can hold you captive. Uh, and, they, and they do so because you're spiritually blind. Now, the Word of God requires uh, every saint to strive to be mature. We to grow. Yeah. When you don't grow, you'll stay, you'll stay blind. Yeah. Uh, so the Bible says that we are to mature, uh, be mature in the Word of God. And, and to do so, we have to be students of the Word. And, amen? Not with the intent to show off or to show anybody what you know. Amen? Uh, but with the intent to avoid being spiritually blind. Amen. Uh, uh, 2 Peter 3 and 18. Amen. Now, sin is a universal sickness. Yeah, it's a universal sickness. Amen. And uh, in case you uh, did not know, because he's, there, there's some people, your temperature is 98.6 today. But, but, I, but can I tell you that uh, uh, right now, today, you're an invalid. <laughs> All right. On your best day. On my best day, yeah. we're all sick enough to die. Yeah. God did, just did not decree for us to die. <laughs> and so as, as a result of this, uh, we are all invalids in God's hospital called salvation and redemption. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and in the moral and spiritual terms, we're all sick and we're all damaged and we're all diseased, amen. And we're all deformed, amen. And we're all scarred. Come on in here. Amen. And we're all sore. Amen. We're all lame. And we're all lopsided. Amen. More than we realize. Just because your head is up in the air. Just because you can still strut. It does not mean that you are not an invalid. Amen. You, are, you can be a spiritual invalid. Uh, and so uh, we deceive ourselves uh, uh, to be strong, healthy, and holy when in fact we're weak, sick, and sinful in many ways. Amen? Uh, that are, and these ways may not be noticeable to you. Come on in here, somebody. Uh, they may, most times they're not noticeable, but they're noticeable to God. Yeah. Come on in here. Yeah. Why? Because God is a spirit. Amen? And so they are noticeable to him in the spiritual realm. Amen? And, and many times they are noticeable to uh, fellow believers. Huh? But we are blind because of pride and complacency. Uh, you'll find that in Galatians 6 and 7. Now, uh, and if you want to get well, amen, if you want the Lord to heal you, I've got to leave you alone. But if you want the Lord to heal you, uh, I want to take you uh, to the man that uh, laid at the pool for 38 long years. Oh, come on in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he laid there for 38 long years. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, one day Jesus walked by. Uh, and uh, uh, Jesus just asked the man a question. He asked him, uh, do you want to be made whole? <laughs> Are you hearing somebody? Yeah. And uh, the man uh, began to do what uh, spiritually blind folks would do. Uh, he began to make some excuses to Jesus uh, about uh, every time I get ready, uh, every time the angel trouble the wall. And uh, he was laying on Solomon's porch. And, uh, but every time uh, the angels come down uh, once a year and trouble the water. <laughs> well, when they trouble the water, uh, when I get ready to get in the water, <laughs> somebody else beat me in the water. <laughs> you don't hear me? And uh, what I like about Jesus is that Jesus didn't give up on the man. <laughs> but Jesus just asked him the same old question. Uh, I didn't ask you about an angel troubling the water <laughs> because the angels operate at my command. I'm going to leave you alone here. <laughs> but uh, all I want to know is do you want to be made whole? <laughs> and uh, he wasn't asking the man, uh, do you want me to deal with your infirmity? <laughs> uh, but what he was asking him is, do you want me to deal with you spiritually, mentally, and physically? <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone here. <laughs> but 38 years uh, is a long time <laughs> to be sick. <laughs> and 38 years <laughs> is a long time <laughs> to be blind. <laughs> 38 years <laughs> is a long time <laughs> to wait on the, the troubling of the water. <laughs> well, I just thought by to tell you that a few days ago. <laughs> Sent Jesus. You don't hear me. A few days ago, the Lord sent the best that He had. You don't hear me to give sight 
to, to the blind. Well, a few days ago, God sent the best that heaven had to die in my place and in your place on a hill called Calvary. I got to leave you alone here. And then Paul said, I want you to hear what we have to say. And I'm looking here. And Paul said, I speak as to wise men. And all I want you to do when I get ready to go to my seat is just judge what I say. I'm going to leave you alone here. But I start by to tell you that God sent Jesus and then Jesus hung on Calvary's cross. He hung right there from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. in the church until I serve the Lord. I believe I sit down now. I believe I take my seat in the house. I have done all I can do. You don't hear me. I'm going to get back now out of the way and let some of the young folk take over now. I'm going to leave you alone here. I got a question for you this morning. Have you trained any of the young folk? Have you shown any of the young folk anybody how to walk right? Did you teach anybody how to talk right? Did you tell somebody, baby, it'll be all right? Did you tell somebody that the Lord will make a way out of no way? Did you tell somebody I've been where you are? But the Lord reached down from heaven and made everything all right. Run up and down the road. You don't hear me. Did you tell somebody? I thought I was having a good time until I met Jesus. You don't hear me. Did you tell somebody? I used to take the whiskey bottle and turn it all the way up. You don't, I'm going to leave you alone here. Did you tell anybody? By and by, after a while, I met a man.
go on my side, to go on my bond. But I met a man, you don't hear me, that stick closer than a brother. I met a man that gave me peace, you don't hear me. You want to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord? I can't leave you alone here. I met a man one day, I was blind, you don't hear me. I had 20-20 vision, but I was still blind. I can't leave you alone here. I met a man that took away my blindness and showed me the world. You don't hear me. I met a man that showed me all of my sin, all of my low down way. I met a man, you don't hear me, down at the exchange station. You don't hear me. I gave the man my sin. I gave him my heart. Only leave you alone here. And then he gave me everlasting life. I'm just trying to tell you that I met a man that gave me joy, unspeakable joy. I met a man that took happiness away from me. I met a man that took the happiness of the world away from me and gave me heaven's joy. I can't leave you alone here. Somebody still don't know what I'm talking about. But let me see here. If I can help you out here, let me help somebody. The juke joints still jumping. The party is still jumping. The crack house is still cracking. I just want to tell you that the Lord will step in on you. And he will change your appetite. He will change your direction. I'm going to leave you alone here. But I want you to know that the Lord is. He's good. He's good and good. Anybody in here know that the Lord is. He's all right. Do you know he's all right? That the Lord will come and see about you yeah. early in the morning. Yeah. I tried the Lord when everybody was sleeping and I couldn't hear nobody. I called on the Lord and the Lord stood by me. I called on the Lord and the Lord came to see about me. I'm just trying to tell you if you can hold out, if you can hold on. But I'm trying to tell somebody that's going through that maybe nobody told you. But in order to get to, you got to go through. You don't hear me? But while you're going through in the old landmark church, I'll be my preacher. In the old landmark church, they used to sing a song. Take Jesus along with you everywhere you go. You don't hear me? I just stop by to tell you that wherever you go, Jesus, yeah. with you. If you take Jesus along with you, yeah. you will never be lost. Yeah. You don't hear me? If you just take Jesus uh, along with you, yeah. his word is a road map. Yeah. You will never get lost. Yeah. If you take Jesus along with you, when it gets dark in your room, yeah. he'll be a light yeah. that shines in darkness. Yeah. And the darkness can comprehend it not. If you just take Jesus. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, just take Jesus with you. Huh? He didn't say that you were not going to have difficulty. You're going to have difficulty. But oh my God, to go through here without the Lord. Huh? They used to have a praise chant in the old landmark church, and they used to say, I don't know what I would do <laughs> without the Lord. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know what I would do without the Lord. Amen. And then they went on to talk about what the Lord had done for them. Huh? Oh, yeah. And so every once in a while, uh, I remember uh, a little bit of that prayer. I just don't know what I would do without the Lord. Amen. 
head. The Lord has made a way for me out of nowhere. I don't know about you. I've had some crying days. I've had some sad days. I've had some days when I couldn't figure it out. I've had some days where I couldn't get an answer. I've had some waiting days. You ever had any waiting days? You prayed and asked the Lord and nothing happened. You just had to wait until you change. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you that there are some things that will blind the saint. And one reason that you can't get a breakthrough, number one, pride. The other one is too complex to be complacent. See, when you sit down on God, there's no reason for him to do anything. Yeah. You have rest. Huh? You sit down on God, no reason for him to do anything. Listen, he let you breathe and eat. Why should he get up and do anything? And what do we always say? We've gotten so tired on God. We're so weary now. Hmm? Well, how many of you plan on going to Canaan? How many of you plan on going to the New Jerusalem? All right. How many of you plan on going to the land of Noah? Oh, yeah. huh? Well, if you're planning on that, you, you don't have any room for pride and complacency. Oh. Come on in here. A whole lot of us say to sit down. Well, you know, I, 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 joined, I joined the church in 1942. Please tell me, what have you been doing in all of that time? Well, I did only sit and wait for the Lord. <laughs> no, no, honey, you got it wrong. They said we own him. <laughs> mm -hmm. How can I help you, Lord? Yeah. Sir, they granted it. How can I help you, Lord? What would you have me do? What would you have me to talk? Yeah. All right. What ministry would you like me to be involved yeah. What word would you like me to say? Yeah. I'm waiting on the Lord. How can I pray, right. sir? Gas bill, Mr. Lord, you did gas bill. All right. May I help you, sir? May I help you, ma'am? May I help you, homeless? May I help you, a, a, a substance abuser? Yeah. How can I help you? You've been out on the corner for 30 years, 20 years. How can I help you? Right. You don't have a place to stay? How can I help you? I know a man. Yeah. Don't be complacent. Yeah. The door's open. Quiet, you